So in the previous video for QuizMe, we started setting up our global index uh, using our next button. Uh, we've started changing our variables, but we haven't displayed them. So what we're going to do is come up to our question label here, and we're going to set our question labels text. And what we're going to set that to is we're just going to duplicate up here and grab this. We're going to set it to the actual question list and whatever the global index that we've advanced to here is. So if it's two, it's going to pull the second question. If it's third, it's going to pull the third question. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to set the image. Now I can grab this same thing that we've written in the past and we're going to take the image and we're going to take it from the picture list and we're going to again attach it to that global index. So we're using that global index now to pull from each label or each indexed item in the list in order. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start pro programming that answer button. What happens when we click on the answer button? Well, this is where we need to grab some of our logic here. We're going to have a couple different things going on. Uh, we want to set up a way for the person to win or get notification and also to know whether they got it incorrect or not. So what we're going to do is grab an if else statement and we're going to come up to here and we're going to grab an equals block and we're going to say if the answer text so we're going to go to that uh, text box that we have there so and if the answer text meaning what the user is typed in there equals so i'm going to duplicate here just so i can grab this list if it equals what's on the answer list at the index number so now you can see if we're on index one we're going to say display uh, this and this which is the bucks image and the, where does the basketball team play and we're going to check it with what's indexed in the first answer list here so it's important when typing your answers that everything is in the right order so then we have that right wrong label so we're going to set that to display correct because they got the correct answer. So we can type in correct. Now, we also want to give them credit for getting it correct. So we're going to go here and we're going to say we're going to set that global variable correct to getting that global variable plus one. So I can just steal any of these so I can then change it to global correct. And I'll grab my little math block from there and adding one to it. Now I also want to display my total correct answer for it. So I have this little arrangement that we had up there. And again, what I'm talking about is this display here so I can keep track of the right and wrong. So I want the text in the correct to read, well, the first portion of it is just, I can grab from here, duplicate, is that correct with a colon. And the second portion of that is, I wanna display whatever is being stored as that global variable there. So now it'll happen, it'll join these two, and I can do my scoring under one label instead of two labels. Now, else, if it doesn't read that, well, I can duplicate this entire section of code and just change my variables from correct to incorrect. So I can come down here, meaning if the user didn't get it right, we're going to say incorrect. We're going to set our global incorrect to plus one. We're going to take our incorrect text and we're going to join incorrect colon and we're going to get that global incorrect there. Now, we want to have a, a logic now for the user to win or lose. So I'm going to grab my if statement here, and we're going to set up our winning logic first. And uh, I don't know, I don't have a block I can steal that I could see, so I'm just going to bring in this equal sign again. And what we're going to do is say, if our global correct equals, let's say you have to have 100% to win this one. If the global correct equals